Hi everyone, Ken Oliver here for the Crafters Workshop. I've got a technique video today that you are going to love. We're going to learn about impasto painting. Impasto techniques have been used for artists for hundreds of years to create depth and dimension in their works. It's a simple method of applying paint very thickly that actually lets you see brush strokes or knife strokes inside the paint whenever it's dry. I'm going to show you how to do this technique today with super thick gel from the Crafters Workshop, along with a stencil called Joyful Sunflower. It's TCW 575. We'll also use a uh, mixed media tiles from the Crafters Workshop, TCW 9053, and new color sparks. We'll be using Desert Ranch and also Grasslands. Now, give me a second and we'll get started. Okay, we'll get started. I've got my six by six mixed media tile here and my stencil. And I'm gonna lay that stencil on top of that mixed media tile. I'm just gonna tape that in place. So while I'm using the color sparks, it stays exactly where I want it. And I'm using two sets of color sparks. I'm using Desert Ranch and also Grasslands. I love how that these colors, the yellow ochre, the burnt orange, the olive green, really lend themselves well to this sunflower stencil. First, I'm going to sprinkle a bit of color sparks around on my stencil. And I am going to arrange the colors. If you haven't used color sparks before, it's a lot of fun. It's a highly pigmented watercolor product, but it's powder. It's not a liquid or it's not a cake. It's actually a powder. So I'm using yellow ochre in the petals. Yellow ochre is a rich, deep yellow. I'll also use a little bit of burnt orange around on my petals to give it just a little bit of highlight or a little bit of shadow. Put a little bit of burnt orange toward the center the center of the petals. I'm going to use this luscious sepia for the center of the sunflower. And a little olive green right here in the leaves. Now I'm very quickly going to give this a spritz of water to develop that color. And it'll be really, really fast. Just a couple of good spritz of water. And I'm gonna lift my stencil, show you the beautiful sunflower design. And I am gonna go ahead and take a minute to dry this with the heat tool so that it's nice and dry before we begin our next step. So I've taken a minute to dry my sunflower watercolor. And I'm also taking a moment to clean my stencil. Next, I'm gonna lay the stencil back on top of my six by six tile. And I'm gonna line that up with how we had it before. And I'm also gonna give that just a little bit of a tape down. Now here comes the fun part. We're gonna create that impasto technique with the super thick gel. And this will be really easy. Take the palette knife and grab a little bit of this gel and just apply it through the stencil like so. And you can be pretty liberal with this because we actually want to build up some texture and build up some layers. So you can add quite a bit. And that's going to make our sunflower look three dimensional whenever it's finished.
this technique is very calming, the applying the paste. It's a very calming technique. Reminds me almost of icing a cake. So now that we've got that paste applied, I can lift this up and you will see that paste covering everywhere where we colored with the color sparks. Now, to give that impasto a lot of dimension and detail, I'm actually going to take my palette knife and etch some little lines down inside that to create some dimension. So with the petals and the leaves, I'm just gonna etch those lines along the lines of the petals. That'll take me just a second or two. But this gives us a lot of dimension. What happens is the color sparks actually picks up in the super thick gel and colors it. Your customers will love this because it's something that's unique. They've probably not seen an impasto technique before. And this can be adapted to lots of different mixed media projects. It can be adapted to art journaling. Now in the leaves, I'm going to do the same thing. It's just to create some texture going down with the leaves. And this does not have to be perfect. In fact, the less perfect it is, the better it looks. And then here in the center of the flower, I'm going to treat this a little bit differently. I'm going to just take that palette knife and just dab on top of that gel medium, the super thick gel, to create almost like little peaks on meringue. all my little peaks made. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. You can see that dimension and texture. You've got lines in the flowers and the leaves and then the seeds have little peaks and valleys in them. And what's amazing is that whenever this dries, it actually becomes very dimensional and clear and gel-like or glass-like. You can see the dimension in that. The other thing I suggest is whenever this is completely dry, take your olive green, add a little bit of a wash around behind this to really make that sunflower stand out. There you have it, an easy impasto technique that your customers are going to love. My name is Tristina Dietz Elms. I'm an artist from Florida and I'm here today to show you how to use Pebio's oil paint markers to create a beautiful sunflower painting like this. The supplies we're going to use are the markers, some mineral spirits, and Pebio has an odorless medium which has mineral spirits in it here. We have a small container to put the mineral spirits in. I like to use a square brush and a round brush, so I have one of each of those. A non-porous plate of some sort, so I have a little plastic plate here. You're going to need some paper towels and a canvas. Now you can use a canvas like this, which is called a stretch canvas, or you can use a canvas board like this. Now I'm gonna invite you down onto the table so that we can get started on the project. Here we go. We're gonna be using the gold oil paint marker for the center area here. 
And then we're going to be using a combination of the yellow and red to do the petals here. And then around the outside where you see that beautiful aqua green, we're going to be using the yellow and the blue with some white. Let's get started with our first gold marker. These are pump markers. You can hear that little marble inside there. And I've already pumped and primed this one, meaning that I made sure that the paint was flowing through down into the end. Now I'm going to cover a large area of my canvas. So I'm just going to get started here. Remember, this is an already primed canvas which just means that it already has paint on it. So if you have a piece of raw canvas, you can go ahead and put some white paint on it and that will prime it for you. This is such an exciting project. I'm glad you guys are coming along with me for this one. I really like doing this one. Okay, this takes about eight minutes I'd say eight to 10 minutes to dry. And in some cases, if you're in a dry climate, it can even dry in about five minutes. So we've got our coverage there. We can go back and add more. As you can see in here, I added a lot more detail in there. Then the next thing that we're gonna do is make these pretty yellow petals. So again, this is my chisel tip marker in yellow. And I'm just going to draw a design like this. And you don't have to go all the way down because we're going to do a rim of orange in there. And you might say, orange, but we don't have an orange marker. We're going to be combining the yellow and the red in order to make an orange. So to start with, we're just going to fill these in. If you want to include some middle ones, you can just go like this. So that's it initially for the yellow. Now with the red, I'm going to show you that it comes with a wrapper on it. So you just twist the wrapper like this and it'll split. And when it splits, you can dispose of that. Make sure that you give your marker a good shake. And then it comes like this with no paint in the tip. So we're going to press. And now you can see that the paint is flowing. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a little bit of red. I can actually create orange by adding a little bit of this red right in with the yellow. Now with the color on the palette, I can use a tiny bit of the odorless medium. So I put some on my brush, but that's way too much. So I'm just going to tap it a little bit right there to get most of that out of there. I only want a tiny bit in here. And now I can actually blend these colors together and get that orange. Or I can blend the colors together here on the palette and then pick it up with my brush and bring it in here and lay in the orange. Now I'm going to take the red and I'm going to go in and make some detail marks. So here's the brush again, not too much of the medium getting most of it out of there and then I'm just going to blend these right in. There we go and now I want to get down into these areas and make this much darker so that there's a shadow there. And if it looks a little too red then just put a little more yellow on your palette So you can see I'm really painting with this as well as using it as a marker. If you feel like you made a mistake, 
Because we're working on a non-porous surface and it's already freshly primed, meaning that it's got a nice coat of paint on it, a nice coat of acrylic paint here in the background, I can go ahead and just take the paper towel with a little bit of this medium on it. And if I feel like I made a mistake, I can go right back into there like that and pull some of that color right out. Now I want to deepen the color in here and it's already dry. So I'm going to take a little bit more of the gold, make it more concentrated and drop in some more gold. Now I'm choosing to bring a little more yellow into this area. So I add some more yellow to here. Looking good. Now it all is blending together. Now in order to get the sky, I'm going to use white. So this is the white. And let's make sure the paint is flowing, yes. So I'm going to squiggle some white in here. This is how you can do your blending right on your surface. And then I'm going to put some blue on here. And then we're going to bring some yellow in because the blue plus the yellow are going to make green. Now I'm going to use the square tip brush and I'm just going to get a little bit of the medium on there and watch the magic. Look at that. What I like about mixing directly on the canvas is you get these variations in color here. Now in order to deepen the area here, I add a little bit more blue and that will just give you a little more drama in between those petals. And now I need a tiny bit more of the medium and watch this. get a nice blue down in these corners to give that extra dimension. And if it's not enough, you can add another drop or two. Easy peasy. Now you'll notice that there are little white gaps in between the petals of the flower and the leaves. So now I can just go in with my yellow marker Beautiful. Now it's time for any finishing touches that you want to do. Little spots that I've put in here and spatters that are on the original. So for the dots I have a few extra markers here. This is the two millimeter or the teeny tiny tip. And you can see that I've put a few dots in around here. So I'm gonna make sure that that paint is flowing. And then I'm just gonna come in and add some dots. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put some spatter up in here to give that background a little extra interest. And we're gonna do that with the green four millimeter. So I wanna shake it. I'm gonna make sure that it's flowing. So now the tip is juiced up. And the way that I do this is I clear everything out of the way. 
and I take a piece of paper so that it doesn't get everywhere and I flick it. And I just do that to add some fun design elements to my artwork. Now there's one more type of marker here that I haven't shown you yet and it's the 15 millimeter marker. So you see that big tip? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And this is our silver marker. So I'm gonna make sure there's some silver on there and then watch how easy it is to go around the edge and frame your work with that beautiful silver. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Another advantage of this is that you can do the spattering as well as there's usually a lot of paint in here that you can get to flow. And then besides being able to flick it, you can also drip it. And the drips are amazing. Beautiful for graffiti work. All right, and we're back for final thoughts. What's left in this plate, I can just leave here and come back tomorrow, next week, next month, and use a little bit of this medium and put it on there and re-blend the colors again. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about the paint is that it is re-wettable. Now you don't wanna throw this medium down your sink. Instead, you're gonna take a paper towel and put it in there, and that's why I work with small amounts each time. And you just clean this out and then throw away your paper towel in the garbage. Now here is the gorgeous finished product. You can see the painting here. I added a little bit more in the way of green dots down here and some red dots in here. And of course, I signed it. And this painting is now with the silver sides ready to have something put on the back here in order to hang it right on the wall. And I do wanna say one last thing. Notice how it is shiny. You don't need to varnish these paintings. What you can do is just hang it right up on the wall. If you wanna varnish it, Pebio does have some four artist marker varnishes that are specially made for these paintings. And you do not want to use a spray varnish on them because spray varnish has solvent in it. And what are these paints? These are re-wettable oil paints. So we do not want to be putting anything on them that's going to have a solvent because it's going to reactivate the paint. And over here, you can see I went a little bit crazy with the black detail marker. And you can just customize this project to your heart's content so that you get these really fun outcomes. Pebio's Four Artist Markers are available through the Notions catalog. And if you have any questions, just ask Team Notions. And if they need to, hey, I'm available and the other folks at Team Pebio are available to get all your questions answered. Thanks so much for watching.